Hey everybody, welcome back to the shop. Today I want to start a series of videos on squares. All kinds of squares. We have you know, your basic tri-squares, we have combination squares. I have several other kinds of squares over in the box. I didn't want to overwhelm you with all of them right up front. Uh, but I'm going to talk about mostly the woodworking squares, but I'm going to touch on all of the squares in the field that I own. There may be a few I don't own. Um, and if at the end of this, if you find that there's a square I didn't touch on and you know about it, go ahead and talk about it down in the comments. Um, but I'm going to cover most of them. <clears throat> I think, without a doubt, the best thing to start with is to show you how to check a square for square. And what that entails is obviously a pencil, a piece of sheet good, could be MDF, could be plywood, could be anything that has still has a factory edge on it. This is a factory edge here. You know, so we know this is flat and true and square. And what you do is you take your square, and this will work with either type of square, any square, really. Um, you take the square, and you hold it uh, to the board. Now you want to make sure that there's no schmutz or anything on the board itself, and you want to make sure it's good and clean here. And actually, looking at this, this brass has a little bit of uh, schmutz on it here that we want to clean off. I don't know what that gunk was, but we don't want it making a difference in how it rests against, rests against the piece of wood. So then you just take the uh, square, you put it up, and you draw a line. And then you flip the square over. And you can do this to the inside or the outside of the square, it doesn't really matter. And you draw another line. And as we can see, this square is way out of square. You should be able to see it on this camera here. Uh, hopefully we're focusing properly. So this this is wide here coming to a point. Um, when a square is coming to a point at the top of the line, in essence what you have is a square that's closed down a little bit. If you look at this example here, if this is a square and this is perfectly square, if your line starts wide and comes to a point, that means your square is less than 90 degrees. It's closed down a little bit. If the line is starting at a point and going out wide like a V, it means you're open, so you're more than 90 degrees. This square is pretty hideously out of square. As you can see here, I paid, I don't know if you can see this, I paid $8 for this thing at a, uh, actually, I did not pay $8. I paid $4 for this. This has $8 written on it, and I checked it. The brass was good. The fitting was good. The uh, rosewood handle is good. In essence, this is in good shape. It's solid. That, and I knew it was out of square. And I told her, I said, well, it's out of square. Um, can you take four? And she took four. So literally, I have a nice, beautiful square for four dollars. We just got to fix it. So in, later in the video, we're going to fix this square. Let's check a combination square. This is a nine inch steric combination square. This is a very nice square. Um, it's clean. The blade is clean. So if we hold it up, make sure you don't shift. All right, so as you can see on this one, it's got a slight gap at the bottom coming to a point again. So this square is pretty close, but it's out of square. It's slightly shut down. Okay guys, so that is an explanation on how to check a square for square. You can see I've got quite a few lines going here now. I, uh, I've checked all of my squares now. Most of them are pretty good, but we got a couple that need fixing. So what we're going to do in this video is I'm going to talk about combination squares. When I say combination squares, I mean a square like this. Something that has a, a steel or cast iron or zinc or aluminum or, uh, God forbid, I've heard they make them out of plastic now, um, head and a blade or a rule. The head, this is the standard head, uh, is also called an anvil. The rule and blade are interchangeable terms for these things. Uh, it has a 90 and a 45 degree angle. Uh, I will also include the double square in this conversation because it functions the same. The only real difference is 90 and 90 on the double, 
45 and 90 on the combination square. Other than that, they function the same. <clears throat> like I said, you can get these made out of multiple materials. Uh, the very early ones, uh, going back to the late 1800s, uh, Leroy Sterrett invented these things back in the late 1800s. And to be perfectly honest with you, it was a amazing invention because it hasn't changed that much in 140 some odd years. So he really came out with a winner. Um, and his company, Sterrett, this is a Sterrett square, is still around. Uh, about half the squares on this table are Sterrett. The other half are another manufacturer. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, what kinds to buy, where to buy them, and that kind of stuff a little bit later. Um, <clears throat> the sizes uh, vary. Uh, you can get them as small as four inches. Uh, this double square is four inches. This is six inches. I have nine inches, 12 inches, uh, and 24 inches here. So there's a 24 inch one here. Uh, you also can get them in 18 inches, and I think there's a few other oddball sizes uh, um, by other companies. Um, honestly, if you're only going to have one square, the, the combination square is the square to get, and I would recommend getting the 12 inch. Uh, it's the best square to get to start in woodworking as well. So if you're a minimalist, you're only going to have one, or you know, you're you're just starting out and you're looking to get your first square, get yourself a good 12 inch combination square. And why uh, would I say combination square over all of the other types of squares? To me, the combination square is pretty much the equivalent of the number five jack plane. It can do more tasks than any other square. Uh, the way I'm going to do this video is it's going to be combination squares today, the next video is going to be all of the other squares that we use in woodworking, construction, whatever. Any squares that are made that I own, I'm going to talk about. And you're going to see that over the course of tomorrow's video that has all the other squares, they're basically just tools that have been made to do one of the things this thing can already do. Um, so if you're only going to have one, this is the one to get because it can do a lot of tasks. And... Uh, Quite frankly, it's the one to have. Uh, where to get them, how to buy them, they can be expensive. You know, the, the higher end ones are pretty high in price. But if you want to buy a new Sterrett, um, you can get them in two-piece or four-piece. Um, this is considered a two-piece. It is a head. Here's an example of a head. This is just the head. This is a cheap one. This is a good steel steric one. And a blade. Here is a blade by itself. This two piece set would be considered the standard set. You can pay $80, $90, $125 for one of these new. You can get them used literally for all kinds of prices. Uh, a good quality one in good shape, a 12 inch steric two piece. It's probably going to cost you around 50 bucks. Uh, uh, a beat up one, like this guy here. Uh, this is functional. This thing works fine. It moves. Everything's good on it, but you can see it's hard to read because it's very dirty. Let's see if you can see it on this one here. See how dirty it is? Check the focus. So obviously it's a little dirty. Um, at the end of this video, I'm going to put this in some Evaporust. And then in the next video at the end, we're going to clean it up and see how good it looks. So that's a little test to show you how to buy a used one. You can find these used for a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars, uh, and they could be very good brand names. You can get a stare for ten bucks that somebody doesn't know what they have and it's all rusty. Um, and then just fix it up, put the elbow grease into it, and save your money. There's a third way to buy these. I'm going to put a link below to a company called Taylor Toolworks. They make, uh, they sell. Uh, they sell tool, all kinds of tools, but they sell squares by the PEC, I believe it's Precision Engineering Company, uh, and they also sell blemish tools. Um, blemish tools are tools that have some kind of scratch on them, some kind of imperfection somewhere in the casting maybe, something that you couldn't sell it as new, but they're not damaged in a way that it affects the use of the tool. And you can get them at half price. You can get a two-piece 12-inch blem 
for 40 bucks on that site. It's good steel. Now, uh, a blem. This is a blem. This blade here I purchased uh, many years ago in Waterbury, Connecticut uh, from a gentleman named Walt who owned uh, Brass City Tool Works. Actually, it was Brass City Records and Brass City Tool Works. Uh, he was a wonderful guy. He's passed on now about five years ago. Um, he had a beautiful store in Waterbury that had uh, one floor was all records, the other floor was all tools. I spent about an hour in there. He actually sold me this 9-inch set. This, is a, this was a full set, the four-piece set. It had a standard head, a protractor head, <clears throat> and a center finder head. So that is a good segue to talk about the uh, full set. If you buy the set of four, you get this protractor head. And what the protractor head does is it allows you to do all of the angles other than 90 and 45. The standard head obviously does 90 and 45. The protractor does the other in the whole 180 sweep. And here's a little video on how to use the protractor head. The center finder head, here's one with a blade on it, it is a kind of a one trick pony. It will find center on the end of a board or a doll. Uh, that's about all it does. I keep this blade on this one. This is a very cheap, uh, I, I want to say I got this at Walmart. Uh, this actually might even be a Harbor Freight one. Uh, very inexpensive, but it works for this. Here's how I use this. Alright, so that's the four-piece set, guys. A four-piece set at Sterrett could be way over $150. Uh, on the Blem side at Teller Toolworks, you can get a PEC four-piece set for $80 bucks right now. That's a pretty good deal. What if $80 is still too much or $40 for the two-piece is too much? There are cheaper ones out there. You can go to the big box stores. You can get something like this. Now, this is made by a company called Empire. Empire, I think you know, is the brand that Home Depot sells all of their layout tools from. This is a 6-inch one. It cost me $9.97. If you're more into Lowe's, Lowe's sells the Swanson brand. They look pretty identical to me. They're probably, it's possible they're made by the same company. Uh, the thing to know about this tool, now obviously it's $10, and you know, you know, this is a 6-inch, this is a 6-inch. The differences are... This particular head is steel. This is aluminum or zinc. It's some softer metal, but the blade is steel. And how these tools work, when you loosen this screw, there's a hook in there that goes into this groove in the blade. Let's see if you can see it there. There's a groove in the blade. Let me focus on you right there. So there's a groove in the blade, and there's a hook in there going in that groove. When you tighten the nut down, it pulls the blade down onto the bottom uh, of the casting here. But it's not a perfectly flat casting. Inside of here, in here, there are two bumps that the rule comes down and rests on. And those two bumps obviously have to be perfectly level and the same height. And that makes the blade come out square to this at 90 degrees that makes it a square. Now, I... <laughs> This is take about six for me in this video. Um, in the first take, I opened this out of the package. This is brand new, and I did check it here. It's one of these lines. I am very happy to say, Home Depot and Empire, you did good. The first time I checked it, it was slightly off, but because it's aluminum, I thought there might be some little smuts or something in there, so I took the blade out, I put it back in, and I moved it back and forth a few times just to make sure there was no little you know, shaving that got in the way there. 
And then I put it back down and I tested it, and the darn thing's square. So you can get them uh, at this price to be square. The thing to be concerned with is it's a steel blade rubbing on an aluminum head. It's wear. Every time you move this, there's wear and tear. All squares will go out of square. It's part of the deal. But steel on steel is going to last longer before you need to mess with it than steel on aluminum. So fear not this. You can buy it and use it if your budget basically dictates 10 bucks. I think it was 13 for the 12 inch. So still well under $20. You can get yourself a, a tool that at this size at a, a Teller Tool Works for a steel one is 40 so, you know, if you have to go this route, go this route. If you can afford the full steel kit, go for it. They're better. I like to go the used route with uh, Starrett solely because I know how to straighten them. At the end of this video, we're going to straighten this one here because this one is slightly out of square. Okay, so now that we know what these things are, uh, what sizes you can get, uh, let's talk a little bit about the graduations. The graduations meaning the actual increments on these squares. Every blade I own is what they call a 4R. What that means is it has four different increments on the four faces. Well, there's two faces, two on each side. We're talking 64ths, 30 seconds, uh, 16ths, and eighths. So that to me is what we want for woodworking. There are many, many other um, graduations you can get on these blades for metalworking, machining, uh, metric, you know, all kinds of other things. Tenths, thousandths, all that kind of stuff you can get on these things. For woodworking, you want to find a square that says 4R for the graduations, or just look at it and see that it has. Um, you know, 64, 30 seconds, 16th, and 8th. Those, those are the graduations that we like to use. Uh, so what do we do with this thing? Um, well, it's a layout tool. For the most part, it is a layout tool. Uh, we use it to make uh, lines, obviously. And since I know this is square, I'll use them here a little bit. You can put him down like this. You take, obviously, the face here and put it to the board mark your line. So it can mark 90 degrees. That's pretty simple. All squares mark 90 degrees. Because it has this side here at 45, it also can mark 45 degrees. Now I am using a pencil here. I want you to just know I'm using a pencil, but I consider these tools to be very accurate tools. And because of that, um, you should be using your marking knife at least at the end when you're getting near your joinery part of your project. At the beginning, if you're just marking lines to cut the boards down to smaller sizes, you can use a pencil, God, you can use a crayon, it don't matter. Um, but when you get to the end, you want to use your marking knife. Your marking knife can get into the uh, etchings here. You can kind of see that these here on this sterret, uh, another quality feature of the sterret, these grooves are etched in. There's a solid groove that you could take the blade of your marking knife and literally get it into that groove. And you can hear it here. Hear that? There's actual indentations there. On these lower cost ones, they're more stamped. There is a slight indentation, but it's not nearly as much. Um, so that's just another, another uh, feature of the more expensive, uh, better squares. But anyway, layout. Um, 45 and 90 degrees. If you want to do other degrees, you're going to have to go to the four-piece set and get the protractor. Uh, I've also heard this thing called a compass. Obviously, this can do any degree in a 180-degree sweep here. And it locks on this side. You lock it down to the set you're at and you're good, it won't move. The uh, other thing we can do with this tool that's very easy to do is check a board for square. You know, let's say we got this board here, I just cut it. Is it square? Well, let's check. Yes, it is. Is it square this way? Yes, it is. Is it square this way? Yes, it is. Is it square this way? Yes, it is. So we can do a lot of checking of boards. Do you want to check 45 degrees? Now I just cut this 45 degree freehand, 
So I'm going to guarantee you this will be something that can tell us that it can tell you that you're not at 45 degrees because I have never been able to cut perfectly 45 degrees freehand in my life. Let's see. Eh, loser, I'm way off. Um, that happens. Um, but that's how you check to see that you're on. You know, I'd have to put that into a uh, shooting board and bring it back uh, to 45 degrees. But it can check things for square. The rule itself comes out and can be something to check. You can use it as a straight edge. These are very, this is 3 30 seconds of an inch thick. This is a good solid straight edge. You can check anything four square. You can check your plane to see if it's flat on the bottom. Bad example here, this is a scrub plane. I could care less if a scrub plane's flat, but obviously you can use it as a straight edge to check that. Um, if you want to lay out a, board, a line here parallel to the edge of a board, you could take your square and say set it to one inch. Well, let's make an inch and a half. I think that one's one. Let's make two inches. Let's go wild. Then you take it. Notice I'm putting the groove down. Uh, that's a mistake a lot of people make with this little task. If you're using a pencil, you want the groove down, and then you want to take the pencil and put it into the groove so it makes a little click in there and it gets in. You do that for two reasons. You notice I didn't slip off at all there. I don't know how many times I've watched a YouTube thing where somebody tries it this way and they start doing it and they do that and they slip off and then they do that and they slip off. Use the groove to keep the pencil in the groove. It helps you for two things. If you have a pencil on the end of this, that's probably a 32nd inch away from the end of your square. Remember I said this is an accurate tool. Why would you want to be a 32nd off if you can set it very accurately to a 64th of an inch? That's why we use marking knives with these things. They get right up to it. Um, that little trick is if you're using a pencil to make the line, get it down there in the groove. A marking knife you can put right at the edge and just run it. <clears throat> so that's layout. Another thing you can do with this tool is uh, checking for depth. Um, you could take, let's say, what we have here, we have two pieces of lumber, two pieces of plywood actually, but let's say uh, this was one piece of lumber and this was a dado, and I wanted to check to see, I wanted this dado to be exactly three quarters of an inch deep, so I could take and put the blade into the dado and then drop the fence flush, tighten it up, and I can look and I can see that I am almost dead out three quarters of an inch, but I'm like uh, I'm like a 30 second off, which is because plywood is no longer three quarters of an inch thick, and this is plywood. So we know my dado would need to be cut a little, another pass with the router plate to get it to three quarters of an inch deep. So you can check depth. You can check depth of anything. I can check depth of this uh, dog hole here. Anything that you can fit this in, you can check the depth of, unless it's longer than six inches for this one. The next thing I want to talk about is uh, machine setup. I want to say one of the key uses for this particular tool and where it excels is not only is it a great layout tool, not only does it check your lumber to make sure you've cut it square and accurate, you can use this tool to set up your table saw, your router table, your band saw, your joiner. It can square fences, it can square blades, it can check a blade at 45 degrees, it could check the height of a saw blade, it could check the height of a router bit, it could check the depth of a bit from the fence, it could check your fence to be square to the miter slot, you could check your blade to be square to the miter slot, blah blah blah. There's a ton of things you can do with this tool on your machines. I took a couple of these downstairs and I ran through really quickly showing you a bunch of the things here and I filmed it. So let's watch that now and you can see some of those uh, techniques. You can check the bandsaw table to be square to the blade. You can verify that your joiner fence is square to the table. Now we're checking the height of a table saw blade. Here I'm checking that the table saw blade is 90 degrees to the table, so we get an accurate 90 degree cut. I have uh, silenced the uh, squeaking of my uh, adjustment on the table saw, so you don't have to hear that. 
you can check that your table saw blade is square to the miter slot on the table saw. I will be doing a table saw setup video and do this in more detail, but this is just showing you you can do it. You can also verify that your table saw fence is square to the miter slot. Mine is not. It's not clear that you can see that here, but it is definitely not, and I will be showing you how to fix this in another video. So as you can see, there's a lot of things you can do with the combination square in your tool room if you happen to have uh, power tools. There's a lot of setups, and I didn't even cover them all. I didn't even show you the router table there. I didn't show you checking a blade for 45 degrees, but obviously you could take the uh, just a head without a blade in it and put it up to a, a blade and make sure you're 45 degrees. You want to check it for 90 degrees? Put it that way, check it for 90. You don't have to have the blade in there to do that. All right, so now we're at the time where we're going to fix a square. And how do you fix a square? Uh, it sounds difficult, but it's pretty simple. Like I said, this blade is sitting in the head, but it's not in here, you know, it's hard to explain. This groove is not a perfect flat bottom. There are a couple, and they're, they're so hard to see, and I can't film it. And this one's really worn. I don't know if I can see this one. But anyway, inside of here, it's not perfectly flat on the bottom, so the blade's not coming down to a perfectly flat casting. If that were the case, and it was out of square, we'd have a problem, because how would you flat, how would you fix that? Because there are a couple of bumps in there, one right here and one right here, so they're like two bumps like this. The blade comes down and is attached to the two bumps, not a complete flat surface. So that if it is out of square, you can shave down one of the bumps or the other to move it left or right to bring it back to square with the fence. Um, and that's a pretty simple trick, but it's how you, uh, how you fix these things. And uh, to do that, you can use... Um, you can use little needle files if you have them. You can use sandpaper and something that fits in the slot. Uh, what do I have here? I have I have a card scraper. A card scraper with some sandpaper. Looks like a nice fit. What else do I have here? I have a I have a five and one tool. That's a good fit. You want something that goes in here, you know, a putty knife will work. Something that goes into this slot with sandpaper wrapped around it, but it's not so thick that it's going to widen the full slot. We just want to sand down the little nibs at the bottom so that the, the, the uh, rule in here moves a little this way or that way. So let's do that. Let's get that going. Hey guys, so <laughs> I'm going to be honest. I don't know if I should be happy or sad here, but I have been redrawing lines with all of my squares here, checking them all. And you would be surprised that most of my squares are pretty darn square. Uh, I am uh, just going through them again. And if you're wondering why I'm doing this backwards... Ooh, maybe this is the guy we fix. Let me check him. This is not a factory edge here. This is the factory edge. That's why I'm doing it from this side. Here we go. This is the winner. That, you can see, is definitely starting at a point and coming out to a V. So if it's starting at a point coming out to a V, that means it's open uh, past 90 degrees, which means this this blade is sitting on here this way, so we need to bring down the bump that is on the flat side of the fence, not the 45 degree side. So I tell myself a couple times, flat side, flat side, because when I take this bar out now um, and I get ready to fix it, you know, you put it down, you go grab your tool, you grab your sandpaper, and all of a sudden you pick it back up and it's like, now what side was it? So we want to do the flat side. So what I'm going to do is I am going to take a little bit of sandpaper here and put it on the end of this 
five and one, seven and one, whatever these tools are. I'm gonna go to the flat side, show you this camera. I'm just gonna go down in here. He's a little too thick with this paper. Let me try the card scraper. This paper's got a little bit of a backing to it, so it's a little thick. This is 150 grit, that's what I'm starting with. Uh, it's just what I had. Uh, you could do 120. Uh, I wouldn't go too much thicker. You don't really want to really rough this stuff up. And I'm not going to do a lot of cuts quick here. I'm just going to go one, You want to make sure you get all the smuts out of there too after you do it. Let's put it back together. Now, I don't expect this to be fixed. This is going to be a trial and error thing. I'm going to do this four or five times probably before I get there. And to be perfectly honest, I might go too far and it might be off on the other side, and then I'd have to wear away a little bit on this side. But let's see how I did. I'm running out of places to make a line here. doing it because you notice I didn't have the nut perfectly tight. You want to make sure everything's perfectly tight. If anything moves here, you may not be accurate. I'm going to do it again. This line is now better than the other line was. So we're still completely together at the bottom and we're coming up to a V, which means we're still open, but the V has gotten closed. So let's take it apart. Let's grab our card, scrape right our sandpaper. a lot to remove you know we're talking you know this one is not off by that much so what I just did there might do it And look at that. This is the last one I just did. We now, can you see that? Let me focus right here. We now have two lines overlapping one another. So that little bit of sandpaper in there on those two little bumps uh, on the side that was high, I brought it down. I now have a square that was, where's my line? Out of square, or that was the in square. Out of square to in square. It's that easy, guys. It's not that difficult. Um, make sure you have a good piece of plywood. Flip the, the square over. And, you know, I make the second line, guys, because I have bad eyesight, to be perfectly honest with you. If you have good eyesight, and I've seen other people do this, you could take your square um, and just put it against the board. Get it nice and, and touched up there. You could make one line. And you can just turn the square over. And bring the square to the line and if it looks perfect to you you know if your blade is touching at both ends and you can see that you don't have to draw the line 
I draw the line because I don't have the greatest eyesight in the world and it helps me to see the gap in between. It's easier for me to see a gap than it is to see one line. It's just how my eyes are. Um, but if you have good eyes, draw one line um, and you're good. In the next video, I am going to be going through <coughs> this collection of stuff. We are going to talk about all of the other types of squares that we possibly could use in our woodworking endeavors. We are also going to take this square here and we are going to dump him in evaporous. I'm going to do that tonight so that I take it out of the evaporous in the next uh, video and we're going to clean this one up. I'm going to show you how to make it usable. I'm not talking, you know, some of those restorations you see on YouTube where the guys bring them back to shiny, bright, you know, I, I'm not making this a beauty queen. What I want to do is make this a usable tool again, uh, which, you know, means some cleaning, basically, and some removal of some surface rust. This has paint on it. it, it it's, you know, it's been used. There's paint there. There's paint there. Um, the spirit level's empty. There's nothing I can do about that. It is missing its little uh, scribe. Nothing I can do about that. Um, but it's a usable square, so let's get it back into... Uh, uh, it, it, let's get it back working. Uh, we're going to make it clean. We're going to go through all of these, and then we're going to, uh, if I can find him quickly, remember I talked about this at the beginning of this video, we're going to fix this one as well, because this thing's way out of square. So that's the next video. I hope you like this. I know this went a little long, but I want to do a lot of talking about the combination squares, and I think they're the greatest square to buy. They're the first square to buy. This would be the second, but you're going to find that out in the next video. So thanks for watching. Have a good day.